Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles, a partnership of Movie Maker magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo and we're here at the South Park Center and I'm here with Susan B. Nimoy with her movie Eve. Let's take a look at a clip. Good to see you. I guess you know I've been here. Um, Susan, thank you so much for being here. Congratulations on your film. Thank you so much. Um, for those that haven't seen it, tell us a brief synopsis of your film. The Eve is about a 74-year-old woman whose husband of 35 years dies, and she's overcome with grief. So we follow her, follow her through her grief, a sexual renewal, and how she moves towards the light. I... Um completely fell in love with Eve you know you really felt her pain <laughs> you felt her happiness you felt her journey and there was so much told without even any words I felt watching the film um, really quite an, an amazing experience um, Thank you. I know this came from quite a personal place where did the inspiration come from in creating this film well when my husband Leonard Nimoy died after a long illness we were I was devastated by even though I knew that his death was around the corner. It still created such an intense vacuum. <clears throat> I felt, I isolated, I rarely got out of bed. Um, and J.J. Uh, Abrams, who had directed a couple of Star Trek movies and is known for directing Star Wars, called me on the phone. He was very close to Leonard. And he said, when you feel like writing, I've got an office for you at Bad Ro Robot. And I said, when I can get out of bed, I'll call you. So a year later, I got out of bed, and I called him. And he said, come on over. I'll meet you. So I went to the office. They were so nurturing over there. It's a great company. He gave me a teeny little space. All the offices for the writers are soundproof. And I closed the door. And that began the process. Eight months later, the short story was born, but the tr it, it went from being Dear Leonard in, a form, uh, in the form of a diary to my awareness that I, I was telling a very, uh, a rarely told story of a woman of age finding herself without all the security of a long-term, 35 years of a marriage, family, so forth, all by herself. I said, this should be a short story. So then I took the diary entries, and I went through them, and I crafted what I thought would be a short story. I had a lot of wonderful friends and readers um, weighing in, and it went through many different incarnations. And at the end of eight months, I had a film. I had a, I had a script. And then I went to a dinner party, literally. I finished on a Wednesday, and I went to a dinner party Thursday night. I was sitting at this table, and this, I had uh, the wife on one side and the husband on the other. <laughs> and he said to me, who, who are you? What are you? What's your story? And I said, I've just written a, a, sh a short film. And she said, what's it about? She was a producer. And I told her, and they said, oh my god, we really love this. Will you email it to me? So I left the dinner party, I emailed, they called me immediately, oh. came over, and we started in pre-production. He, the d director of photography, is Jim Frona, mm -hmm. who directs a lot of, uh, I directed I Love Dick. And yeah. What he taught me in the making of, of the short was, and we went into production instantly, instantly. He wow. brought his DGA camera crew, uh, we hired a casting director, and in three weeks, we were ready to shoot, and the actress dropped out two days before. Yeah. Can you believe that? It's unbelievable. Yeah. And, so... and I had already blocked all the scenes 
to the extent that uh, one does with Jim because he straps the camera on him. Yeah. So he's very fluid walking around and so I... So when did you know at that point with 40 hours to go, what does is, what is your mind go through in that moment? Like you just lost the person to play this particular role. And when was that change when you suddenly thought, wow, well, by deal? nature, I'm a pretty even person. Mm -hmm. I wasn't in my youth, but in my old age, mm -hmm. I, I sort of thought of it more as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, because after all, it was my story. And I had been an actress for all those years, though I had done no acting work from 40 to 75. Um, I said, I, I, I know this character. The question was, how was I going to play Eve and direct myself? So I, I created this, these moments of privacy during the filming where I'd say to Jim and the first, I said, I'm going to go over there. I need a minute to s switch hats, as it were. Mm -hmm. So I would do that, and then they'd be, the first would be waiting for me, and he says, are you ready? And I say, yes. Yeah. So I'd come back in, and uh, I would say action, and then we'd begin the scene. Jim would say cut. I would say action. Wow. And uh, because I was still in the throes of the, of the scene, and I, I, you know, I'm not seasoned enough to know if we had achieved what we wanted to. And we did one or two takes. That's all we Wow, All really? we could do, well, yeah, I mean, you know, you got four days. And, yeah. and Jim taught me, um, he taught me a lot about current filmmaking. You know, I was a master over the shoulder, you know, <laughs> yeah. in my days as a director. And his way of shooting is, uh, he becomes invisible as the, the camera. He fuses with the camera and he moves in and out and around us and our job as actors is to stay in the scene. Mm -hmm. So there were no close-ups, there were no let's do it again kind of thing unless there was a technical problem. How, how I mean, what I love about Eve is that you just felt so much her vulnerability and, and what she was going through. How did that feel? Obviously this is your baby, this is your film and then taking on that role and, and having that vulnerability. Does, because I mean, essentially, you're directing yourself, you know. Well, um, I was, was very, I was very fragile. You know, I'm much better now, but mm. in those first two years, I was very fragile. And what I had to weigh always is, you know, if you express the feeling, will the audience mm. uh, be robbed of an opportunity if to feel themselves? And because it was always right up here, and mm -hmm. my job, I think, was to to sit on all that feeling and somehow le let it sit. Mm -hmm. You know, there Eve is a is is a short film that has very little dialogue, mm -hmm. except in that one scene with my son and and mm, his friend, yeah. who also was an architect in my firm. There was dialogue there, which was important to the telling because yeah. we needed to know what how. The, the risk or the stakes were very high. Yeah. Eve had had, had a, a sexual encounter with her son's best friend, yeah. all of which plays out in a very much more uh, fully realized way in the screenplay that I've written. Yeah. Uh, but it, there were a lot of silences. Yeah, I love those moments. Me too. They're so, you just... You, Me I, too. What There's was so great is you just... You know, sometimes, you know, uh, movies, they can pan away or, n or not give us enough. And you just left us just almost like hanging in this moment mm -hmm. to feel and feel her and what she's going through in this beautiful essence of center of dance. And it was just gorgeous to watch. It really was and really appreciate her. And so um, what I want to ask you is, is that I felt me personally, many people have, that have watched it that I've spoken to have said they just kind of fell in love with her. What did you want from people to get from Eve, to understand about Eve? Because this comes from such a personal place and for you and, you know, God bless your husband as well that gave you the energy to make this film. Um, but what was it about Eve that you wanted people to kind of get from her? Well, I wanted to put a woman of age as, as the central character mm -hmm. in a story. Um, 
because uh, I was one of the original six women at the Directors Guild who took on the industry back in 1979, right? Yes. Yeah. Because we, we didn't exist, you know, uh, as directors, uh, as actresses, we didn't exist. So I've been in the trenches on this issue for a long time. I had a story to tell, but it just so happened that it was a story of a woman of age. Mm -hmm. So I achieved my one goal was to make it make a woman of age the centerpiece in a film and I think the um, what I got from that was young women have come to me and said seeing you sexy and strong and uh, lost and finding your way made me not fear getting older as much mm -hmm. as I have because as we've spoken this culture is a youth culture yeah and it took me forever to find the actress to play Eve mm -hmm. because every actress I saw dyed her hair and had all kinds of plastic surgery and I was looking for me mm -hmm. in the sense I have gray hair I don't dye my hair I haven't had plastic surgery and I wanted that face that being to play Eve mm -hmm. And I was very sad when she left. Yeah. And so uh, here I am playing Eve, and I wanted people to have an insight into what it's like at that moment in life yeah. to have the floor drop out from under you, and yeah. what are you going to do? Yeah, uh, I love that. And can, we just, can you just repeat, because you did something in 1979 before we even know how big the fight is it feels today, or how much more coverage it gets today, but can you just say what you did in 1989? Because it was so incredible, because it was so much harder then, and now we're seeing strides being made, but you did something significant. Yeah, w women directors were not working, and women over 30 were not, really 35, were not working. So, keep in mind that in 1979, we didn't have computer records. Mm -hmm. So we had a mole, a deep throat at the director's guild. This mm -hmm. is, this story is out, so I'm not no, revealing no. it to you, but no. we would go in there literally at night and comb through the files and find all the employment records from which we put together a sort of an inventory, all the statistics that proved that there was uh, um, prejudice against women directors yeah. and uh, even r women writers. Very few were writing films that were getting made, particularly if they were about women. So we went to the DGF, DGA after we had compiled all this information and they couldn't turn their backs on it. So they called a meeting in the auditorium of the DGA and all the heads of agencies and studios came. And um, we presented, and there was an immediate shift. We went from 4% to 16% of women working wow. for about a year, and then we fell back again. Mm. Because there's a fundamental prejudice against women yeah. in power. It's a boys, yeah. it's a very, it's a patriarchy. And now we're seeing more and more and more, although not enough. Stacy Smith, mm -hmm. Dr. Stacy Smith mm -hmm. at USC did an Annenberg report about it. This, the women in film have gotten on the bandwagon, wa wagon, bandwagon, mm -hmm. and Sundance. Mm -hmm. So now there's a lot of presence and pushback. Mm -hmm. So, but it's going to take a long time. Well, thank you for literally starting it because, you know, it's, it's always harder when you're about to start something and, and, and make it happen. And it's, there's a lot more friction when you're starting something. So thank you for those in 1989 for starting that movement because that's led us to where we are today. And we're you know, gradually seeing the strides and hopefully that will level improve. Um, I just want to touch on something. Um, I think there's something very powerful and beautiful about something that's very painful and turning that pain into an, into an art form. Now you've come through, obviously it's, it's been, you know, it's been four years and, and are you pleased that you've made this film? Does it feel like a sort of almost therapeutic and, and feels good and, and that you feel connected to him and everything? Yes, I feel really good that I did it. I always heard Leonard saying to me, he, he says, Susan, keep your ass in the chair. <laughs> Every time I wanted to run away or mm -hmm. bolt, because the feelings were so intense and I was feeling so overwhelmed because, you know, if you're the writer, it's only it's got to come through you. It's yeah. not going to come through anybody else. Yeah. So I wanted to face it head on and he was right there. Yeah. 
and uh, so I feel really, really good. It was a very existential mm -hmm. kind of experience because I sat down to write it. I had no idea it would be a, a short story. Mm -hmm. I mean, a short film. Then it morphed into a short film. Then I was at this dinner party, mm -hmm. meeting these wonderful people, and bada boom, it became a short, and then entered into Sundance and was accepted. Yeah. I mean, that's the it's stuff the Hollywood. It's amazing. <laughs> Hollywood but you legends, know, really. No, but that's that's the, but well deserved as well. And you now, know, really. now the script is done, and yeah. and we're submitting it. Helen Mirren is my number one choice oh. then we love charlotte her. rampling yeah Fanta oh, well listen i can't wait to continue for this to unfold but i'm also very grateful because obviously at new filmmakers LA we had a program which did focus in on on ageism how how significant how nice was that to have a program that does actually put a focus on seasonal uh, you know people in front and behind camera yes when you think about how many wonderful independent films have been made with anthony hopkins mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh christopher Plummer, mm -hmm. uh now the uh, what was it called with michael douglas and alan arkin oh yes 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 because you know beautiful men and beautiful women are not uh immune to the life pass you know like go yeah. getting older we just don't want to be sent out to pasture yeah. we've got lots of stories to tell yeah and let's make stories about mm -hmm. that not only young 20 year olds yeah let's tell those stories and bravo to you for doing a program where all the stories that you all the short films were about people of age yeah well we yeah. have to continue to yeah. break down the barriers and yes and we do focusing on everybody and everything there good we for go. You. See? see, it feels good, right? Um, I just want to say because I, I feel like I've had therapy myself, just sitting here with you and hearing <laughs> your your great stories and your great knowledge and and and, and what you've done and accomplished in your career. Um, but what one last piece of advice have you had, or maybe that you have for yourself, or you heard from someone else about anybody else out there, whether they're a filmmaker want to make their first film at 95 or, or they've just come out of college, what, how, what piece of advice do you have? Well, I see the process in two, uh, in, in two parts. The first is having the idea and sitting down and working on it and working on it. And listen to the voice inside of you that says, it's not ready, it's not ready. And keep your ass in the chair. Mm -hmm and reach out to other people who you respect and ask them to weigh in on the process. That's mm -hmm. part one. And not being afraid to let go of what you think it should be, and, but being open to what it might be. Mm. That's the first part. The second part is nobody said it's easy. And just having done it is the important lesson. Not every film. I, I was a production executive at two studios in my lifetime. And all those scripts that came in that never got made, that doesn't mean that the writing was devalued. It just means that they didn't get made. Mm. So not everything gets made. But if you have to write and you have to tell the story, mm -hmm. then keep working on it until uh, you're ready to abandon it for, for reasons that are more about the fact that I've done the best I can with it, it's still not good enough, mm. so I have to walk away and I'll try something else. Mm. But it's all in the doing. It's I all in it. the doing. And all that's in where the you, doing. All like in that. the doing. Mm -hmm. All in the doing and keep your ass in the chair. There you go. I like both of those yeah. things. Um, it's such an inspiration. I was so inspired by, by uh, Eve and, and, and very inspired by Susan. And, and, and thank you both for, for, for sharing uh, your story and, and the story behind Eve as well. It it's is my beautiful. pleasure. Thank you to you for the work you do. Thank you. Susan, everybody, thank you very much.